In this video, we're going to talk about the three fitness myths that are stopping you from losing weight and possibly making dieting a lot harder than it needs to be. Three nutritional myths that are stopping you from losing body fat. Not weight, but body fat. Ooh, that's what we need to lose, body fat. Yeah. Doesn't matter about losing weight, really. Doesn't. Just usually correlates, but you don't want to lose all your muscle. It'd be pointless. Number one. Clean eating. Clean eating. A lot of people go, oh, I'm just going to clean up my diet, you know, eat clean, eat clean, eat clean. Like, you know, I'm just going to eat clean. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Which, for the most part, might get you some results at the beginning because what you've done is you've probably cut out higher calorie, more processed foods, uh, slightly more convenient, lower in volume, so you're going to overeat. So you might see a drop in weight or body fat at the beginning because by default you've reduced calories. Yeah. But the more that you eat of clean food or if you're not conscious of portion control, you can still get f***ing fat. Yeah, when you realise that in clean eating terms peanut butter avocados are a fair game eggs are fair game all of a sudden you oil can, yeah you can start piling on the calories because what happens is you start dieting you feel a little bit hungry because you've loaded your calories you get a bit peckish and you're like, oh, i can eat a bit more actually it's clean it's clean, it's clean though so i can have peanut butter just not on toast yeah but i can just put it all over all the other foods i eat so what people do is they end up eating more of it more of it and then their weight loss stores they can even put on weight you can gain weight eating good high quality I foods i did yeah. I, I didn't know anything i mean still don't yeah. but i didn't know anything and i just used to eat chicken brown rice and broccoli I, i'd have i'd have that for about six meals a day i'd have like a big bowl of oats in the morning a big bowl of oats in the evening but the calories were too high what i was consuming yes it was all quote unquote clean but it was too high i never got in good shape yeah and the other problem with clean eating of course is that when you cut out all of those favorite foods that you have like your chocolate your mcdonald's all those sorts of things that you might occasionally enjoy you end up having a what cheat day number two cheat days cheat days are completely useless they do not boost your metabolism to any degree that's going to see an increase in fat burning anything like that it's just almost an excuse to be to be greedy and to eat more calories and what people tend to do is they tend to do something like clean eating for six days of the week and then on a, I, had a, cheat day. I, had a, I had a burger for lunch so i might as well just carry on the rest of the day I have a cheat day in it i'll just start again on, on yeah the clean eaters slag flexible dieters for having 10 percent 20 percent of flexible foods during the week mm. which in calorie terms probably works out less than going clean for six days and then smashing in pizza ice cream on one day just because on one day like it doesn't make any sense that nah. it doesn't make any sense so yes relaxing on your diet might be a nice psychological break but it certainly shouldn't be something that's regimented that's looked forward to all week that is you're literally obsessing planning about. it obsessing about it yeah. it's way too high in calories and when you think about it how is an extra five six thousand calories on top of your diet going to help fat loss because for that to work that must mean it raises your metabolism by the five six thousand calories and then some to get into a deficit to, to get yeah to get the benefit of that your metabolism that will not go up to ten thousand calories it's not going to happen it's not going to go that high so what happens when you have a cheat day and a couple of days later you might have lost weight is what you basically drop a lot of water weight you're usually pretty stressed from dieting or from going so low calorie what happens is you have that food you put on a little bit of weight a bit of glycogen you might train a bit harder your neat goes up you start moving more you naturally burn more calories you then lower the calories again you've been eating on a monday tuesday wednesday come wednesday you're lighter than you were like say last thursday friday it was a cheat meal that boosted uh, it wasn't a cheat meal that boosted metabolism no. you dropped a bit of water weight because your body wasn't as stressed anymore it enjoyed a bit more food all of a sudden you weigh a little bit less but it's not the cheat day it's the fact you've been in such a harsh deficit for all the other days around it you didn't manage to eat more than the deficit you were in it's not the not eating is it that's, no. that's causing the, the stall in weight like it's not the not eating surely and then eating causes more weight loss wouldn't happen would it otherwise you would just keep eating and eating and eating and eating that's what gets people fat so what we do with our clients is that we'll give them we have them they have their macro calorie targets and we'll give them maybe refeed days that we can so have a few more calories again all factored into their weeks yeah. we know over the week they're in a, in a deficit it's not a cheat day they still no. calculate they still work out what they're going to do they might enjoy a nice meal out but it's all factored in nice yeah days. so sometimes i might structure one high day two high days or i might say have a free meal or have this or this is what i want you to do in the morning if you're having a free meal let's say somebody's going for a wedding and you've got to eat, eat that wedding meal what's the point of tracking it because you're going to eat it regardless so again yeah. just times like that a birthday you just go yeah relax it's not a cheat it's just you're eating out or sometimes yeah. i might give a recommendation that go and eat off the menu but select something that's not in the top five most calorific options like yeah. don't have the rack of ribs don't have the double burger and chips like select something that's good off that menu but don't worry about tracking so i did it with a client the other day she was going out for her like anniversary meal and it was one of those where she's on say 1800 calories for the day normally on a refeed day and i said to her right we'll have 800 calories before you go out over the day so breakfast lunch 400 calories each you've got a thousand calories there you know what go and enjoy that meal you've had a buffer of a thousand calories it's probably be around that number maybe a tiny bit higher but at the end of the day you're not going to want to track it marginal enjoy yeah. it
it. Last one is keto. Mm. Uh, keto. Again, you will see initial drops in weight in, in the beginning and possibly even fat. If you drop out carbohydrates, you are dropping out calories which means that you should be in a calorie deficit at least until you start to realize what you can eat yeah. um, which we'll go into in a minute but also you will drop glycogen you will drop water because of the lack of carbohydrates so you will see a dramatic drop quite quickly going keto yeah. yes some of that will be body fat cost the deficit but most of that will be glycogen and water so glycogen is a storage form of carbohydrates from when you were eating carbohydrates they get stored in your muscles as what we call glycogen and as you don't eat carbohydrates now because you're keto your body is going to use up those stores quite quickly for that week that you train so the first week you might might see quite dramatic weight loss on the scales but you might not look great and you certainly may not have lost body fat necessarily then what happens is people go oh, i love this keto diet. i can eat as much as i want and they realize that they can eat as much bacon peanut butter avocado, avocado cheese <laughs> cheese as much as they want and steak and they go oh, i love this thing and then what happens is they realize that they aren't losing any more weight because guess what they're eating too much food they're just eating more food they're just eating more of the fat and the protein that's what they're doing so then they've just eliminated the deficit now they're probably training a little bit worse because they're not eating carbohydrates which is our main energy source to fuel glycolytic wear resistance training so you're not performing as well as you could you're not recovering as well as you could you're then making the diet slightly harder to adhere to you try going out and eating somewhere in a restaurant and, and staying on track unless you're having a steak salad steak that's, that's it <laughs> like, you like it's harder to adhere to you then might be more likely to say it on a weekend start again on monday have a cheat day have a cheat day so again the calories are going to be ramped up because you've made your diet slightly harder to stick to by doing that and also your breath Sting. It'll hum. It's like a skunk shrink. <laughs> yeah, awful. Awful diet to be on. Don't even try it. You still need to track your calories. It's pointless. So if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to give us a like, give us a subscribe if you don't already. Maybe give us a comment, possibly tag somebody else in this, share it with them that might need to see this. Until next time, bye.